one of why we why we did this, why we played this eight a.m. game. It's because all you guys complain so much about deadlines. So now you got no, you got no reason to complain. You can take your time. You can change your story five times. But I, but I think this. I mean, I don't think you change the story once. You know, the story was these two guys here sitting beside me and, and the rest of our team. I mean, that's a that's a great win against a team that we we thought they were better than Auburn. I mean, we really did. And uh, you know, without Tyrone Lewis, uh, a, a short bench, a young bench. I thought this team took a giant step forward, a giant step forward. And, and I've said this about our team, that people think because we have four starters back that it's going to be the same as last year. Everything's going to be the same. Even our team, I caution our team to have those thoughts. But we are not like last year. We're a work in progress. We need those three guys in the middle to get better. We need for Austin Cooley to develop his role. And uh, you know, I thought that happened today. So there's a lot of storylines here. The three freshmen, big guys in there, combining for 16 points and 17 rebounds. Austin Cooley's two big threes in the second half. But I think the first storyline is these two guys right here. They weren't going to let us lose. Bilal Ben and Rob Garrison weren't going to let us lose because they are winners and they are champions. Coach, how much did the Auburn game and you know going 0 for or then going on that 11-0 run at the end, how much did that help you today when it got a little tight? Well, we, we, we said that about that game. That loss, you know, you never, you never accept losing. We, we are re- we, we were, it's really hard to accept that loss. We should have won that game. Uh, but since we did lose it, we have to make sure it wins us some games down the road. And I think that's what happened today. You know, if we hadn't had that experience down there in, in, in Alabama, you know, maybe we, maybe we don't take care of business down the stretch today like we did. Rob, uh, can you talk about what Coach said, not, not letting him lose, especially in the first half of the run you put together there? When, when the player goes out, somebody has to step up. But on this team, we have a lot of people that step up. And we had a lot of contributions from everybody from right on down the line, from the Austin Coolies to the um, Scooter Gillettes, all the way to the Bilal Benz. You know, um, um, it wasn't just us that wasn't going to let us lose. It was our team. And um, we wanted to make sure that. Do you change your approach at all when Anthony's on the game and you're handling the ball more? I um, I always try to be in attack mode, but I think when Anthony's not in the game, I feel like I have to be even more of a playmaker, um, primarily off the dribble, because um, um, Anthony is our point guard, and when he goes out when he goes out the game, I'm really the only um, lead guard left in the game. So um, I would say just a little bit. I try, try to change my approach, but my approach is whatever his his approach is. Can you guys talk about what it was like getting ready for this game? What time did you go to bed last night? What time did you get up? Honestly, I, don't, I didn't get any sleep last night. <laughs> I really did. Um, Austin was my roommate. He was sleeping well all night. Um, he was snoring a little. But, he, was, um, he was sleeping for a bed. I really couldn't sleep. I don't even know if it, it, if it was because of the game, but I was, I was going through um, plays already in my head. And, Probably it was the excitement. Um, yeah, well, I really didn't get, get much sleep, but I did get a good night's rest. Um, I just got off my feet and um, kicked back. How about you, um, No, I didn't get no sleep. You know, I woke up at like three times. I woke up at like two forty. I woke up at four twenty. <laughs> then I woke up before they called. It's like right before they called. I was thinking I was late, so I just hopped up like. <laughs> and then I seen Luke still sleep. Luke all his covers all the way around. I'm like, Luke, get up. He's like, wow, it's only, it's only 5.30. I'm like, my bad. You know what I mean? So, I mean, and it, and it was really hard trying to, trying to like, block stuff out. And it, and it wasn't being nervous, because you know how you had those games where you're nervous and you're just thinking and you just, it was just like, dang, TV, you're playing 8 in the morning. And it just kept playing over in my head and I'm trying to sleep and I'm just looking around, dang, can I just please get to sleep, you know what I mean? But it, it, it was mainly the, the excitement it, it, and it was fun. It was fun playing at 8 o'clock in the morning. I thought a big part of this win was the Gallagher Center. I mean, our students were just unbelievable, and our staff just did a fantastic job. And we filled the building up at 8 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, it's just uh, it's getting to where we can almost count on that on, this, on the building, just making a difference for us. It's got to be a tough place to play. I mean, I know that uh, people in our league feel that way. So. Did you sleep? Did I sleep? I usually sleep, like, from May to the end of August. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't matter if it's 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. It's, it's tough there. I know it's a side note. It's not part of the game, but... What did uh, Calvin and Frank uh, first have to do with this? I mean, the experience a little bit, and what did he say to you guys, if anything, uh, over the last couple of days that's been kind of interesting? 
told us that that the toughest team is going to win the game. He said when well, we jump on him from the start, and he told us he don't like he don't like when he don't see the game. He said he get real mad, so we took that. And, and I think that living in his legacy, so when he packed the house and he comes and he take that flight from Houston, he he want to see us win. He want to see us take a uh, you know. Um, coach introduced um, Doug Murphy yesterday, and he just um, he pointed at the rap movement. He was like, um, "We have a lot of our, our band is are dominated by the NIT." And he explained to us that back in the fifties when um, Calvin Murphy played, that it was actually better to um, go to the NIT instead of the NCAA. So um, that just shows the, the history and the tradition that we have in our school. And and like Omar said, um, um, Calvin went on to say that we are his legacy. So um, that kind of put pressure on us, like, man, we are the people that carries on his name, and um, right now the torch is in our hands, and, and then, as far as I know, we're going to try to run as fast as we can with that torch until it's time to hand it on to the next. Are you cognizant of him sitting on the sideline there when you're... I'm coach? No, I'm following. <laughs> 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 I, I know you're a fan. Every play. Oh, so yeah. Oh, well, I, you know, but, you know, I don't want to block that voice out. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a basketball player. Once I get on the court, it's, it's yeah. the, the nine other players on the court and the big guy. <laughs> I think I saw him one time during the whole game. He was doing the roller coaster thing. <laughs> I, I, I just looked back. I was like, what are you doing? Yeah.